Okay, we start off with a 2.3 millimeter bead on our hook, and this is uh, our one of our favorite hooks. It's the Partridge Check Nymph hook, and these are barbless. Uh, we use these for so many different patterns now. Uh, these these hooks are awesome. So I'm just going to have some. Uh, this is just some ADOT dark brown thread, <clears throat> and what I'll do is start that behind the bead. So now what we're going to do is tie in the materials for the tail and the body in uh, basically reverse order. So for the tailing, we're just going to grab some good old brown partridge and strip off five or six of these fibers, like so. And I want these to be about the length of the main part of the hook shank which basically takes it to about right where I uh, left my thread there at the hook point. And then I'm going to work my way back down the bend. Okay, next we're going to take some small brown UTC ultra wire, and we're going to tie it in here, and uh, the point of that's just going to go up into the bead, give it a couple three wraps, and then we're going to let that hang out here while we tie in our tinsel. So the tinsel is going to be the body. This is just some Vivas medium in brown. And again, tie that so that it's I'm going to go up the length of the body. And then I'll work a couple wraps back over to where the tail was tied in. And now I'll wrap over all of them. And I'm going to create a little bit of a taper, so I'll head back down about halfway, unwind the thread a little bit, and then come back up, tapering towards the thorax, and you just kind of build up a little bit of a taper there. Okay, now we're just going to wrap our tinsel up. And just right into the thorax, we'll tie that off and trim that. And then we're just going to take the wire and give it a nice ribbed body. Bust that off. Okay, now you can do this a couple different ways. What I usually like to do is take a little bit of Loon UV Clear Fly Finish and Flow and just dab a little bit in between the wire ribs there and that's going to coat that up a little bit give it a little bit more durability kind of let that sink down and then we'll zap it okay now i'll take some skinny skin you could also use pheno skin and I like to trim this to a taper when I tie it in. And then I'm just going to tie that in right in front of that hook point where I left off. And then the thickness you kind of gauge when you cut this off to be about just a little bit wider than the bead. So that when I pull it across the bead like that, that it will... Uh, actually cover the bead. So we've got that tied in, we're going to leave that. Now for the thorax, we're going to use this Nature Spirit and Emergent Stubbing. And the color that we're going to use is this PMD Brown. And it's a, it's a nice PMD looking brown. Uh, a lot of people don't equate PMDs with brown, but the nymphs and the emergers are quite brown. And as they transition into the adult, that's where you're the, the wing case will crack is split and you'll have the, uh, the actual yellow body show up. But the rest of the insect is, uh, it's not at all yellow uh, before it becomes an adult. Okay, before we dub this, one thing you want to pay attention to is you've got um, about a hook, uh, half of a, an eye width between the bead and the eye of the hook. Because we're going to tie some stuff in there. So you don't want the bead to be all the way forward. So. You want that scooted back a little bit, kind of the width of my scissors. 
And so we're just going to dub the, the portion in here directly behind the bead, being careful not to crowd it too much. Okay, and we've got the dubbing in there. Notice I still got that space behind the eye and the bead. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is tie in a set of legs. And on that we're just going to grab some uh, more partridge. So I'll take the partridge feather and just strip off the webby pieces and the longer fibers we're not going to use. Something like that. And then I'm going to take and cut the very tip and it splits these and that's what we're going to use for our legs. So now we're just going to move the thread in front of the bead and that's where I can build a couple of wraps there and that locks that back in. So now I've got plenty of room to tie off my legs and the uh, skinny skin. So I'm going to take my legs here and I like to usually follow the curve of that feather stem and set them down and what we're going to do is kind of give it a loose wrap and then we'll adjust the legs uh, accordingly. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and pinch with my non-wrapping hand, give it a, a couple of somewhat loose wraps and then once I've done that I can now start to pull and shorten those legs. The nice thing about having the bead there is that that will push those legs apart and you can use that to kind of control where they sit as you as you pull them. So you want something just like that. The legs are splayed out there a little bit. And then once I've got them where I want, I'm going to pinch them right around the bead and go n right next to the bead with a couple of fairly tight wraps and that's going to hold those in place. And now I can snip off the uh, tag end here. Okay, and the final piece, I'm going to take this thin skin or skinny skin and it's important that you uh, kind of see this from this top angle. When I pinch this, I'm going to also try to pinch those legs and the skinny skin will help push those legs more down to the side, uh, kind of in a more natural fashion. So um, you have to view this from the side. So pull, pulling the skinny skin. Now I'm going to grab my legs, pinch the skinny skin, give it a loose wrap, Another loose wrap. And now I can start to pull that a little tighter. And as I do, give it a couple of snug wraps, like so. And now I'm going to pick this skinny skin up and just come in front of it and throw down two or three wraps. And that locks it in place so that when I cut this, it's not as inclined to slip out of there. And now I'm just going to come in here as close as I can and snip that. And now preen everything back just to make sure and I'm going to build up a nice little clean head. Another nice thing about these check nymphs, they have a kind of an oversized eye. So <clears throat> your, your thread wraps are a lot less likely to pop off when you're tying in tight quarters like this. They're, they're really great for that. And we just whip finish. All right, here's where it gets fun. So, and, and this is the key to this pattern. I mean, otherwise it's just a beadhead mayfly nymph. So I'm gonna take some of my 3D paint and I'm going to, this is a, a yellow color you could use uh, green, uh, but you know, whatever color. You gotta look at the naturals, they'll be different colors. And then I have a craft stick, or you can use a bodkin. Let's use a bodkin here. 
and I'm just going to put a little dollop on the end of this bodkin. Now I'm going to just apply this right down the center and you'll use that bodkin to kind of taper it from you want it wide at the head and kind of tapered back towards the uh, the thorax there. Okay, once you've let the paint <clears throat> dry a little bit, just a couple minutes is all, it's going to be, uh, you can kind of shape it as it dries a little bit with your fingernail or the bodkin a little bit just to give it that little um, tapered shape. Now it doesn't look that great, but what happens is when we add the uh, additional coating of flow here that it will uh, kind of seep down into the holes there and give it a little smooth finish. Makes it look a lot better. Then we'll just zap it. Notice how that really fluoresces.